Welcome to Electron Online. This is the exact same example we did in the previous video, except in the previous video we used standard engineering techniques. Here we're going to do the problem using simple integration. Again, we have a beam that is 6 meters long. We have a distributed load that starts on the left side at 300 newtons per meter and ends on the right side at 1200 newtons per meter. The distributive load can be represented by a parabolic equation y equals kx squared plus 300 because we started 300 above zero at the left side right here. This is the vertex of the parabola. The first thing we need to do is find out what k is equal to. Remember the result we got last time was that the x coordinate of the centroid was at 3.75 meters from point A to the right and from the, that's from the previous example and so we're going to try to find that value again and then find the force at A and the force at B, the reaction forces at the two support points. To try to find the value for K, we're going to plug in this value right here. This value for X we get 6 and for Y we get 1200. When we plug that in, so Y when X is equal to 6 and Y is equal to 1200 is equal to, um, that would be 1200 equals k times x squared which is 6 squared plus 300. So we take this part of the equation, we subtract 300 from both sides, that gives us 900 is equal to 36k or k is equal to 900 divided by 36 which is equal to 25 which allows us to plug that into our equation so the force load on the beam can be expressed by the equation y equals 25 x squared plus 300. Now we need to find the centroid. To do that we find a small little segment on the beam. We call that a small little dA. That dA will be equal to the height which is y times the width, width which is dx and the centroid of that small region will be right in the middle. We don't care about the height, but we do care about the distance away from the uh, support point A right here. That would be a distance x away. So the x coordinate of the centroid of that small little dA is equal to x. Now the equation or the formula that helps us find the centroid is as follows. x can be found by taking the integral of the x coordinate of the centroid of each small little piece times dA integrated from the left side to the right side, which would be from 0 to 6 for the x value, and divide that by the integral of all the dA's. That means the complete load on the beam. Plugging in what dA is equal to, this is equal to the integral from 0 to 6, and also substituting for the centroid, that would be x times dA. dA is y dx, and y is equal to this value right here, that's times 25 x squared plus 300 times dx. And then we divide that by the integral of all the da's. Therefore, on the denominator, we get 25 x squared plus 300 times dx. And the limits are also from 0 to 6. x equals 0 to x equals 6. Multiplying this out, we get the integral of 25 x cubed plus 300x times dx from 0 to 6 divided by the integral of 25x squared plus 300 times dx. And now we can go ahead and integrate, find the limits, and find the centroid that way. This is equal to, integrating the numerator, we get 25x to the fourth divided by 4 plus 300x squared divided by 2, and the denominator, oh, that's evaluated from 0 to 6, of course, in the denominator we get 25x cubed over 3, plus, that's not a very good looking 3, there we go, and plus 300x, again evaluated from 0 to 6. Plugging in the upper limit, we don't have to worry about the lower limit because we just get 0 there, that is equal to 25 6 to the 4th power divided by 4 plus 300 6 to the 2nd power divided by 2 the denominator we get 25 times 6 to the 3rd power divided by 3 plus 300 times 6 to the 1st power since 
all the terms have at least one six in them. I can divide the numerator and the denominator by six. This goes away, that becomes squared, that becomes the first power, and this becomes the third power. Now I think we can go ahead and use the calculator to find the rest. We have 216 times 25 divided by 4. That gives us 1350 plus. That's 1800 divided by 2, which is 900, divided by 36 times 25 divided by 3, which is 300, plus 300. Adding the numerator together, we get 1250, or I should say 2250, 2250 divided by 600 equals 3.75 meters. And that is indeed equal to what we had there. So again, you see that you can find the centroid using this technique as well. The next thing we need to do is find the force at A and the force at B, using a different color for that. We're trying to find the reaction force at A and the reaction force at B. What we can do there is assume a pivot point at either A or B, let's pick A there, and then sum up all the moments caused by the two forces. One is the reaction force at B, and the other one is the normal force at 3.75 meters away from the left side. So let's say this is 3.75 meters, and there we have the total force from the load, F total, acting on that. F total would be the denominator of this integral because that's what we did here. We integrated over the entire area. The area represents the total force, which then would be 600 times 6. Remember that we divided both the numerator and the denominator by 6. So if we take the denominator, multiply it by 6 again, that gives us the total area or the total force on the beam. The moments about point A equals to zero because everything is a static situation. So we have the total force, F total, multiplied times the x coordinate of the moment, 3.75 meters, minus the force caused at B, multiplied times the moment arm of 6 meters. F total, zero is equal to F total, it'll be 600 times 6, that's 3,600. That would be newtons times 3.75 meters multiplied or oh, minus 6 meters times F sub B. Therefore, F sub B is equal to 3,600 newtons times 3.75 meters divided by 6 meters. And again with the calculator, 3,600 times 3.75 divided by 6 equals 2250 newtons is supported by the support at B and since the total A and B have to add up to the total amount of 3600 newtons we then know that F sub A is equal to the total 3600 newtons minus F sub B which is equal to 3600 newtons minus 2250 newtons and the difference it looks like 1,350 newtons, which is the force supported at A. And here you can see that there's many ways in which you can find the same answer, but the old-fashioned technique of simply integrating over the force load works just as well. Maybe it takes a little longer, but it works just as well and you get the same answer. So it's good that you see there's various methods to use that, to use here in these techniques. Although we have that simplified method, in the next several videos we'll show you even a better method to go ahead and solve for the centroid and solve for the forces supporting the load. That's how we do that.